Happy Friday, everyone. And I have been shocked by how challenging it's been to do this video. I thought it was gonna be easy and I'm really actually glad to be sharing it with people, but I'm gonna be talking about something that's been, I've been pretty self-conscious about my whole life and um, a little ashamed of, even though it's something public that anybody can see the second they meet me. Um, but something happened over the last week to really shift it in a profound and helpful way. And I'm thinking it might help others to talk about it. So I'm Rachel Davis. I'm a uh, mixed media artist, psychologist, and creativity coach in the San Francisco Bay Area. And if what I'm about to say is helpful to you, please share it and maybe think about going to my um, link in bio about a coaching program I'm gonna be doing um, coming up soon, uh, creativity coaching. We're, I'll be addressing things like this that get in our way and that maybe don't have to. So around a week and a half ago, there was a documentary, um, a little short documentary in the New York Times called Whale Eyes. And it was by a young man, there will be links to all this below, by a young man who was born with the same condition that I have, strabismus. He has some additional conditions as well. And that is that we were born completely cross-eyed. What your brain does when that happens is it shuts down one of your eyes. In my case, it was my left to allow you to see. Because when your eyes are crossed that way, the images sort of, um, they combine and you can't see straight. So James decided that, it, everybody call, refers to it as lazy eye. He decided he was sick of that name. And he decided to call it whale eyes because nobody cares that you can't see both of a whale's eyes when um, you look at it. And it occurred to me, I will be 65 um, in a few months. It had never occurred to me what a poor name, lazy is. Um, a, as if I could whip it into shape and just try harder and make it work. And B, it's such a brilliant solution that the brain came up with to allow you to see in this circumstance that you have no control over. So a few things happened afterwards. Uh, a good friend reached out to me. I only talk about this, before this, I only talk about this to very close friends and family. But then a fellow artist, wonderful artist, Katie Kuhn at the ICB building where I work, sent me an email and said, thinking about you, is this your experience? I wrote back, I said, absolutely it is. And um, thank you so much for reaching out and allowing this conversation and this connection between us to happen. And she wrote back and said, phew, I was nervous that I had broken decorum. And, you know, Katie and I are both way too old for decorum, and it was a wonderful thing to have happened. The following day, I was at the studio with and bumped into Katie and two other artists, and we were all talking about this thing that had happened between me and Katie. And it was not only fine to have the discussion, it was enormously relieving and helpful, which got me to thinking about something I share with my um, private practice clients all the time. It's a metaphor about a laundry basket. Say you've got a closed laundry hamper in, um, in your house somewhere and you've got weeks worth of dirty socks in there. The second you open it, it's really gonna stink. Um, but within a minute, that smell is gonna dissipate in the oxygen and that's what happened. So I wondered, everybody's, like, my whale eye, anybody can see, but everybody's got them. Um, and the way we talked, I mean, in general, and also us as artists, for sure. Like, I have this series that I'm doing now, this botanical series. I absolutely adore it. But sometimes in my darker moments, I will describe it as boring, derivative, um, unoriginal, all that kind of language. I was talking to a fellow art, another artist about it, and she admitted that she talks about a, a series that she enjoys, and she describes it to herself as stupid. So what if we stopped doing this? And um, one of the things I'm gonna be discussing in my program is how can we stop doing this or how can we get distance on the fact that we do this and not take ourselves so seriously when we do this? Um, I wanna quote a little bit from Adam L. Ellick who helped James you know, shape the film before it was, was posted on the New York Times website. He says, the film demonstrates the power of silence and the lengths we go to in order to avoid the uncomfortable. It makes me regret the meaningful conversations that never took place at my dinner table during my childhood. His film offers a lesson in broaching <clears throat> the uncomfortable and in navigating differences. So thank you for listening. I think I've covered 
I think I've covered most of what I wanted to and um, have a great weekend.